experts and analysts admit that the breakthrough of the border with the Russian Federation by the Ukrainian armed forces has not yet had an impact on the operational level of the Russian Ministry of Defense, nor has it changed the strategic level of Putin's thinking. The Russian leader still refuses to sit down at the negotiating table. Moreover, he is confident that he will be able to wait out the West and seize Ukraine step by step, year by year. Analysts from the Institute for the Study of War voiced their opinion on the events in Kursk and Putin's reaction. Analysts initially emphasized that at this stage, it is still too early to talk about the pros and cons of the Ukrainian armed forces breaking through the border with the Russian Federation. In 2022, Kyiv clearly showed the whole world that it can carry out brilliant operations against the Russian Federation when it counter-attacked the enemy in the Kharkiv region and liberated Kherson. Ukraine has demonstrated its ability to conduct operationally significant counter-offensive operations and liberate large swathes of territory with proper assistance and equipment from the West. At the same time, the whole world also saw what kind of disasters these very delays in military aid lead to when, in February 2024, the Ukrainian armed forces retreated from Avdiivka. The ISW states that only constant and timely military assistance from the West will allow the Ukrainian armed forces not only to defend themselves, but also to conduct a counter-offensive. The Kremlin will continue its genocidal policy towards Ukraine until it faces major setbacks on the battlefield. The Kremlin has spent years denying the existence of the Ukrainian nation. These efforts have consequences. That is why Russian officials talk only of Kyiv's capitulation, not peace talks. However, a ceasefire on today's borders and under today's circumstances only benefits the Kremlin. The Ukrainian invasion of Kursk, however, underscored that the war in Ukraine is not in an indefinite stalemate and showed that Ukraine, Russia and the West retain the ability to make decisions that significantly affect the current realities of the battlefield and the future end state of the war. Alexander Kovalenko, a Ukrainian military expert, believes that terrorizing the civilian population is a part of Russia's warfare strategy. He shared this opinion on his Telegram channel. Terrorizing the civilian population is a normal state of affairs in Russia, Kovalenko stated. He noted that recently, Russian forces have conducted a series of strikes targeting exclusively civilian objects in Ukraine. These attacks began with Kharkiv, including the use of 9M723 ballistic missiles and continued with strikes on Sumy, where a center for social and psychological rehabilitation of children was destroyed, followed by strikes on Kyiv. Not a single military facility was hit, only civilian targets. Particularly noteworthy is the strike on the Sumy Center for Social and Psychological Rehabilitation of Children. How sick and depraved do you have to be to target such an institution? A decision-making center, he added. According to Kovalenko, the use of terror against civilians has long been a part of Russia's warfare strategy. He drew parallels to the Soviet Union's tactics, stating that terrorizing the civilian population was a tactical and strategic element of Soviet warfare. This involved the targeted destruction of civilian infrastructure and the killing of civilians to spread panic and create chaos, applying moral and psychological pressure on authorities to compel early surrender. This concept included elements of war crimes which could well be classified as genocide, Kovalenko noted. He cited historical examples including the Soviet Union's Afghan campaign from 1979 to 1989, where estimates of civilian casualties range from 700,000 to 2 million. During the Chechen Wars, civilian casualties were similarly high, with estimates ranging from 400,000 to 120,000 in the First Chechen War and 50,000 to 200,000 in the Second Chechen War. Kovalenko also referenced the Five-Day War in Georgia and the Russian campaign in Syria, both marked by attacks on civilian targets such as schools, hospitals and residential neighborhoods. The strikes on Ukrainian border towns and villages are not acts of revenge, but are driven by a strict, systematic pragmatism dictated by a broader concept of warfare, he explained. Kovalenko argued that modern Russia's approach remains consistent with historical patterns of violence and terror aimed at intimidating and disrupting civilian populations in occupied territories. Modern Russia is no different from the USSR in its approach. 
Kovalenko concluded, emphasizing that the terrorizing of civilian populations continues to be an integral part of Russia's strategy.